Hello everyone, this is another pixel art stream that I did and now converted into a time lapse. These concepts were done by the great Philippe Martinez, who was kind enough to let me uh, turn them into pixel art. Philippe has done these in a way that works really well for pixel art because when I select any of these guys, and these are the two that I'm going to be working on, and scale them down, because of the thickness of the lines, they retain most of their detail. Now, Philippe has worked before with uh, with pixel artists. He's done concept art and work with pixel artists. One of the artists that he worked one, uh, with was Sandy Gordon, which is also a tremendously good uh, pixel artist. A pixel artist. So what you can see here is that the details of the characters still hold up because the lines that were used were th uh, so thick. Um, and it's a joy to work with these concepts because the shapes are very bold and very simplified. Uh, he doesn't get bogged down in detail. So most of the shapes that you see are the, the silhouette defining shapes. And all the characters had very simple um, and, and different silhouettes. And these are the two that I thought were would be most fun to make. Uh, this one just because it's cool, just because a really cool character. And the one, the other one has a really cool face. So what I'm doing here is my unusual method, which is to, to do the line art before. And this is because I'm tracing over a drawing. If this was something that I was sketching in real time, I didn't need the line work. But because this is something that I'm tracing over some other artist's work, I want to make sure that I get all the details, or at least all the shapes. So what I'm using now is a different layer uh, for the color. And the top layer, which has the outlines that I drew, is 50% opacity. And the reason for that is that it's going to give me extra shades for uh, the different elements of the um, of the character. So the different body parts are going to be shaded with a, a flat color, but then the outline is slightly different. And that is because I paint the same color underneath. And that allows me to know what color I'm painting and where I'm painting it. So the the, the stick of the side is the first one to get any, any sort of... Um, any sort of shading, and now I'm using that red there to simulate light uh, on the chest. I eventually give up on that. Uh, and I'm also using shading here on the shoulder pads to suggest that sort of spike that's protruding out of the shoulder pads. I keep zooming in and out both to look at the drawing and also because I'm streaming this and I want to uh, tell people what I think this the shape of this part of the body is and why I'm drawing it like that so that people understand my decisions. Now, because the, the head uh, looks like it's got a, a cloth over it, I'm not doing any highlights like I did on the armor because it feel I feel like it won't look like, um, like cloth. It will look like some sort of plastic or shiny material. Uh, for the legs here, I kind of figured that the body was uh, wrapped in either uh, strings or ropes around the legs, almost like some sort of um, fur boots. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do with those diagonal lines, which there's not that much room on this on the image for me to do that. Um, the the reason it's so small is because I decided that the sprite would look good that small, and it still does. The, the The design still holds up, but it doesn't allow me to add as much detail as I would like. So eventually, I'll I'll um, I'll I would like to redo uh, to redo these, but slightly bigger. Uh, also, I apply the same material that I have on the legs. I applied it to the arms. Uh, he's wearing gloves, I, I, at least from the concept, I feel like he's wearing gloves. Here I'm trying a different shading on the face. I kind of give up on it because it does look like he's tilting his head down a little bit. That's why the cast shadow on the chest will eventually, there we go, I get rid of the red because I think that's a little too strong. Now on this guy, I'm going to do the opposite, which was what I usually do, which I start with shapes. I just paint shapes of different colors over the different parts of the body. And then I go in and add the details. Now, because this time I have a reference, I'll paint over the reference some of the elements. But as I add more and more colors, I get to have shading on the piece that I'm doing. As you, you just saw me draw the brighter shade on the drawing and then drag it up onto the face. Now, I think at this point, I don't need to go and draw over the reference that much. What I'm doing is I'm figuring out here the shape of the mouth um, and how it looks. And I kind of decide to move it back to where it was before uh, because it was more faithful to the concept art the corners of the mouth being slightly uh, lower. It kind of gives him that sort of angry, um, deciding look, almost like I'm ready to fight. Um, also, the direction of the eyes is something that I have to tackle with because on the concept, Philippe uses different shades to suggest depth. And as I do that with skin tone colors, it kind of looks like I'm covering that bit there with skin. Now, because his drawing is black and white, he gets away with that. And, and that's absolutely fine. 
Uh, it's just that I have to make different decisions when I'm drawing it. Now the sash there on the body, I drew thick uh, filled in because I know that I'm not gonna have room to draw the space in between the edges of the sash. So I just draw a big bold shape. And here I'm just drawing the red as, as the outlines to make sure that I get everything. Uh, and I pretty much follow the same step as, uh, as I did for the, for the guy with the scythe. Um, I use the rest of the body of this guy with the, with the daggers um, the same way. Now these hands are a lot easier to do than the ones on the guy with the scythe, both because the hands are bigger, so I have more room to draw the fingers, individual fingers with shading, but as well, they're, they're, uh, they're, um, the posture of the hands, the angle that the hands are uh, in relation to the camera, in relation to the, uh, to the character. Now, uh, I chose to do a bright armor, whatever that is, whether it's metal or, uh, or something. And I did it bright because, and I did it blue because I don't think that white would have worked. Uh, two reasons. One, um, it's very dull. It's, it's desaturated. It's not an interesting color to, to make a main element out of. Uh, and three uh, and two because you always get some bounced light off of your uh, secondary light source which is in most cases for outside scenes is the sun is the blue uh, sorry the sky the blue blue sky um, here I'm playing a lot with cast shadows because unlike the guy with the scythe the the guy with the daggers is having his hands forward so there's definitely going to be cast shadows and that's how I'm playing the the depth of the character that way. I'm having highlights on his arms, but then shadows underneath so that I, um, and then there's a shadow on the right side as well of his legs so that I uh, uh, can sort of sell the idea that the, the hands are uh, protruding out of the body, that that's sort of his pose. Now there's a few elements that I had here, or I just test them against a black background, which it didn't work that well because of the shape of uh, the colors I use on the hair. And then I changed them a little bit more. Um, but still, the whole idea of um, of these working up against different backgrounds would probably be more like an issue for selective outlining rather than just a, a normal outline. And um, and yeah, this is the pretty much the result. I add a little bit of shadow here, and I'm I'm cropping the image uh, so you can see them big. And that's pretty much what it came out to. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, and thank you to Philippe for letting me do this. Bye.